SteelSeries sent over the Rival 500, and this is a very interesting MMO MOBA type mouse. Kind of rethinks the whole genre of this type of mouse, and we're going to take a look at it in the video, so do stick around. This is mostly a palm grip based type of mouse. You can, of course, claw grip it or, you know, sort of hybrid claw palm grip if you really want to, but especially with the buttons on the left hand side, uh, it is mostly used for palm gripping here. There's also quite a lot of nice texture on both the left and the right hand side for your fingers to grip onto. And one of the really awesome things is that the two lower buttons on the left hand side of the mouse are actually lockable with this little switch on the bottom of the mouse. So you can use them in your normal fashion just by pressing them down. They're actually relatively mushy, but certainly nothing too bad. Or you can lock them off if you prefer to have a more firm sort of lip for your thumb to sit on and obviously miss out on two buttons, but at the same time you won't be accidentally pressing them. So that's a really nice feature. To carry on with the theme of the buttons, if you include the two lockable ones at the bottom, there's actually six buttons just on the left hand side. There's also two extra buttons on the top to the left hand side of the left click, and there's also one extra fairly large button to the right hand side of the right click. Now I actually quite like the feel of the buttons on the top being a little bit harder to press. That means that you don't accidentally hit them when you're searching for the left or right clicks if you're ever, you know, moving your fingers around. So that's quite a nice feature. Another thing that I didn't actually notice until I read it on the box was that these have reinforced left and right clicks. This is a really nice feature. It means that when you actually press the left or right clicks, if, especially if you press them fairly hard, they end up coming to a dead stop. There's no bending or bowing or feeling like the, the left or right clicks are gonna break in any fashion if you push them quite hard. It is a really nice dead stop. My Logitech G700S on the other hand is actually a complete opposite to that, where you do feel a bit of bowing and bending at one of the sort of corners of the front of the left click. So that is uh, actually quite a nice thing. That kind of adds to the overall quality that I think this mouse has has. It feels really like you could take a hammer to it and it would be just fine. It, it really is a, a very nice mouse to have in the hand and does feel very well built. Another thing to mention is that it does feel fairly weighty. I mean, comparing it to, again, my Logitech G700S, even though the G700S is a wireless mouse with a AA battery in the back of it, this one still feels a little bit heavier. And obviously it does have a similar style. There's actually a similar number of buttons as well. Of course, this one isn't wireless, but for me, it is still a fairly nice experience. It just means that that weight means it's not necessarily gonna be best for FPS games and that sort of thing for your flick shots. Now I tested this with Doom and a couple of other games. Of course, this isn't meant to be an FPS mouse. Uh, that's just my sort of favorite uh, suite to go through, but either Way, it is a very nice mouse, especially because it uses a PixArt 3360 optical sensor, uh, very sensitive, but you can also change those settings in the menus or uh, in the uh, SteelSeries Engine 3 software, which is actually, again, a really nice bit of software. It's very easy to change the sensitivity. It's really easy to change the lighting. It's not quite as advanced as, you know, Razer's Chroma Configurator and stuff like that, but it is still a very nice experience, and it's also very easy to remap all the buttons too, so I really don't have too many bad marks to say about the software or actually the mouse itself. To come back around to the side buttons, for me these are a very nice overall setup for them. I think the positioning is actually really great, especially if you have relatively large hands and your thumb can stretch between all of them. That means that if you're in uh, the sort of what I might call correct resting position, you can pretty much hit any of the switches from that single position, which is a, a very nice place to be in. Also, instead of having the, uh, similar to the uh, scimitars, uh, you know, 12 button stack of buttons that are all fairly small, fairly, you know, quite close to each other. And especially if you have a relatively large thumb, you might actually miss or miss hit some of the buttons. This is a very easy setup to do. It means that you probably won't ever miss hit your buttons randomly. So it's a very nice overall setup. So to give this mouse a score, I think I'm gonna have to go with a 4.5 for Vive Money. In terms of performance, it has to be a five. Functionality is also gonna be a five as well. I really don't have too much bad to say about it, including the software. Uh, also in terms of styling, I think it's going to be a 4.5. I think it's a very nice looking mouse. You've got that RGB element if you're interested in it. And of course, uh, Tetsu Mubi score, I'm going to have to go with a 5. I think for me, this really is a, a fantastic mouse. I think it's a, a decent value for money, a decent price point, uh, and I'm going to have to go with a top tier award. It really is quite fantastic. And if you're after a mouse that isn't necessarily for pro FPS gamers or anything, but is a nice feel in the hand, it's got a, a very good number of buttons in very good placement 
components as well with some good software to go along with it. I, I really do uh, highly recommend this one. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to uh, it in the description down below. Um, and otherwise, uh, you know, feel free to use the usual links. Of course, if you're buying anything from Amazon or Overclockers UK, it'd be awesome if you could use those links in the description down below. Of course, if you want to pick up a Tech Team GB hoodie or just one of these sort of semi-funny designs that are in there, feel free to take a look at the merch store. Uh, also, if you want to support the video, the best thing you can do is subscribe, like, leave a comment and share, whether that's on Reddit or Tech Forums or Facebook. Anything is helpful, so please do when you can. When you can uh, and of course otherwise uh, yeah thank you for watching check out some of the other videos i'm going to leave some over here and the subscribe button over here for you and uh yeah other than that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video